Hi, everybody. My name is Daisy, and I work with Southwell Graphics. Um, my background is in art education. Uh, I have conducted many workshops for different backgrounds, different ages, all throughout um, the Tongva territory, so Alley County areas. And um, today we're going to be doing a workshop that's a family multi-generational um, type of workshop for different ages. So the materials that we'll need is uh, just white paper and it can be printing paper or it could be <clears throat> paper that is um, like a mixed media type of paper. Either one is fine or even watercolor paper. It's just that the white paper is most accessible. And we'll need a pencil with eraser, some different color construction paper, scissors, some of these um, sort of uh, twisties from the market that are, sometimes they're white, sometimes um, they're green, but just a few, maybe five, six or so. If you happen to have, um, instead of these, uh, there are some metal type of, um, I want to say they're called round head. Um, hmm, I don't have the name, but there's there are some other office tools that you can use that are metallic and you can put them into a hole that can actually fold down like that. But those are, they're very rare now, now that we're doing mostly everything um, over uh, the internet, documentation is all. Uh, technological now so people don't really do too much um, hard copies anymore so that's why they're hard to find but um, aside from that you need coloring tools it could be markers it could be uh, color pencils I I prefer some markers um, I have <clears throat> regular thin thin tip but again it, you can use any type of marker you can use color pencils you can even use some crayons and I have in a little cup, I have a mixture of one part water and one part some of this um, acrylic paint. But you can also use tempera paint and that's, that's fine too. Um, if you really don't wanna use green, we don't have to use green. Um, the name of the project is um, April Showers Bring May Flowers. So <clears throat> it's the transition, the seasonal transition of you know, the rain comes and then plants start to grow. So that's why we're using some green for um, the, the green part of the flowers that we're going to be creating with um, cutouts of construction paper. And um, that is basically the materials that we will need. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you we're going to start doing you also i'm sorry you also do need a straw now um i don't really uh get straws anymore because of the plastic um so i actually got one of my <clears throat> excuse me one of my pens and i took off the tops the top and the inside and it's the same thing as a straw so um you can do that but if you do have a straw that you can reuse um, that works just fine too. Or you can even roll up a thick paper. You can roll it up and um, uh, cut the tips and make it nice and flat and that tape it. And that could be a, a temporary straw too. So um, one moment please. Oops. So we'll start with our white paper first and our mixture of one part water and one part green paint in here. And I'll be holding, uh, placing my paper landscape. So um, long way left to right. And instead of painting, 
uh, flower stems will be basically dripping some of this paint in there. I'll hold it and then drop some down here at the bottom. And I'll be blowing onto the paint to create the stems or, um, you know, blend of um, grass and stems. So it's, you'll see it goes um, kind of all over. You could control it depending where you have puddles and you uh, blow more air on there, but it is going to be very like almost, just very organic type of shapes. So these are the puddles I was referring to. So instead of putting more paint on there, because then the paper gets very soaked, you can just blow onto those puddles and spread that around there. Oh, excuse me. Let me move this. I just dropped a little bit of paint. There you go. It's okay, Daisy. We're we're gonna edit these, so we can edit this Thank out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit more paint over here on the right. Move this here. And you could definitely make it more watery and it'll be more translucent or make it more opaque and um, depending on what you'd like. So I think I'm going to leave that like that. And while this is drying, set it aside. And it should dry fairly quickly. It's actually already not so wet on the surface, but we're still going to let it dry a bit more and then bring out our construction paper. So for the petals, we'll use the construction paper and I have just six different colors, um, just your basic rainbow colors. And I pre-drew some hearts. So the hearts are not going to be the final shape. Let me use a marker and show you. Uh, they're actually just parts of the flower. So we'll use four of the of the hearts to create one layer of uh, the petals. And I'll show you that in a bit. Or we can also do this type of shape. Any shape that you'd like to create is fine. It's um, up to you. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to put three, excuse me, I'll be putting three um, sheets together and cutting them like that. It shouldn't be an issue um, 
because the paper, these papers are fairly thin. So I'll be cutting. The sizes should be just taking into consideration the, the size of the white paper you're using and just how many flowers you want to put on there. Since my paper is not big, it's just a standard, standard size. I'll probably just do around five flowers on there. Okay. So I have other colors I'll do, but just cutting these out first. So it's almost going to be February, we're in January, and spring comes along in March. But then we get the rainy season again later on in April. And it's super important that it rains here in California, especially Southern California. So we, we definitely need the rain, even if it's, if it's sometimes an inconvenience to some people because of the driving and traffic. But um, nonetheless, it, the land, the earth needs it, and we need it too, actually. So If for some reason you do not have construction paper, because I know it's actually sometimes um, not that easy to find. Uh, I had to go to Office Depot for mine and I couldn't find any at the dollar store. Uh, the packet was pretty pretty thick and it had, has, I don't know, has a few hundred sheets for um, $3, it's not too bad. But if for some reason you cannot find any or it's too expensive, you can use white paper and you can color, you can color them in the petals and then cut them out. Same, same thing. Okay, so here we have these, um, these here, which I'm going to layer like that. I'm going to layer them. Those will be like that. Uh, these heart ones will be held together. In the middle, so You can also do different colors and in the middle. So there's two options there. We will be using the twisties for both.
Hi, Daisy. Could you Hi. share maybe what your favorite flower is? My favorite flower, if we're talking about their beautiful aromas, I would say uh, gardenias. Gardenias smell really pretty. They're these, um, they grow on these like uh, shrubs, sort of like shrubs and they're white, they're really pretty, uh, but they smell amazing. Like that is one of the most beautiful scents that I've ever smelled. Um, and then just looking at how beautiful they are. Um, there's just so many. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Daisies, of course. <laughs> I do love those. I think all flowers are really beautiful. Yeah, it's hard to pick just one. Lavender. Um, roses, yeah, it's just so many options, but I, I'd say gardenias are my most favorite. Okay, so let's check on our paper. Let's see how I'm looking. Okay, so it is, for the most part, up here kind of dry already so we could yeah we could um start to cut some slits so the way we the way we're gonna do it is by i'll just show an example here so by slightly folding the paper uh, where we want to put the the um, petals and slightly folding it and just cutting a tiny slit. So trying to not crease the paper too much. If you are an adult and you have uh exacto knife that you rather use and that's that's fine but um for kids or for those of us that don't you can just do that and it'll be okay so we just have to be careful and if you need to leave your paper drying a little bit longer that's okay So I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, so I'll be using these first. The well position them. So there's one. So before I actually do that part, I want to see where 
I want them to go. So it's best to put the contrasting colors. So contrasting, meaning that they are like opposite tones. So when they're contrasting, they create an effect where each color makes the other color stand out like just as equally. So although they don't match, they are able to uh, create that effect for each other. Now we're going to use our glue stick to glue these together once we figure out where we want them to go. And if they're layered, um, that's okay too. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'm grabbing my glue stick now. Any basic one will do, but if you don't have glue stick, you can use the white Elmer's glue. And wherever you have your markings, you can cover that up and put that on the back. Okay, we'll set that aside to let it dry. And we're not putting them right above the other, we're putting it slightly off center. So you can see the both tones on there. Gonna move this so we could see. So I first glued two of the hearts together. And put a little bit more glue on top there in the middle. And then add third one. And the last one. So this one looks sort of like a four leaf clover, but that's okay. And
So blue is really messy. So I like to have something underneath or make sure that I wipe the counter afterwards because that those glue marks do look they stand out when you don't clean them and you need a nice flat surface when you're working. So okay, so here's another one. And I see you could also do two different colors. You do orange here and then red on top. You could probably even keep going with the layers, but we're just gonna leave that one like that. Or even a rainbow one. It's always nice to have flowers at home, but um, I like to, nowadays I like to, I like having plants. I just don't really get bouquets um, because I want the plants to you know, stay alive and keep um, blooming every so often. And the bouquets are, you know, very temporary and although they're very beautiful. But yeah, having plants around is super relaxing and they provide us with the oxygen that we need. Okay, so now that we have the flowers, petals cut out, we're gonna also let them dry a little bit, just a little bit longer because we're also making slits in the center, in the middle, um, that's where That's where the um, twisties will go through. Just moving some stuff here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut a couple more, couple more holes here. And we'll put that aside again. So same process here in the middle. We're going to do two. We're going to do two slips. So they'll be right next to each other. So as you bend the paper, you want to do them fairly close. So maybe um, I could measure it. It's about, it's like half a millimeter between. So anywhere around there, half a millimeter will be good. So now we have the two slits there. And 
we will be like weaving the the twisty so one side through the bottom and through there and you want to pull it out to be even on both sides so uh, don't just pull it because then it'll tear the center just push push it and then pull and you want it to be even on both ends like right around there okay so we have one ready now back to our background wherever you did the slits we need to do double sets. So we had already marked one for each area. So let's go ahead and add another one. I'm going to start here and just stick one side of the twisty, one twisty end into the each hole and then push it all the way in. And on the back, you just have to flatten it out and then it could stay like that so it's peeking out back here i'm just gonna well i could cut it let's see yeah just cut it okay so I was leaving the paper to dry a little bit longer because it was just too wet and I didn't feel like it could be a little dangerous there when when the paper's so um, moist because it could easily tear, especially if you're using the white printing paper. Okay, so we've got another one here. Okay, so same, same thing here. We have the back. Now we don't want the slits too wide like this one I made it way too wide and now it's like sliding in there. Um, it still works, but maybe half of that size would have been better. And if you don't have twisties at all, you could definitely just even glue them on there. Okay. 
Yeah, we are practicing using mixed media. So this is just an example of how we can use everyday objects to make art. This part here. I do one. This one is the green is sort of camouflaging with the green background, the stem, so I might just not do that one in there. And then the back, to secure them a little bit more, you can do one down and one um, going the other direction. Yeah, I'll put the green one in there. Okay, so looks like that part is done. Now we can add some details in the sky. And I'm grabbing my coloring tools. So I'm drawing a sun. and some clouds.
Okay, some sun because the plants, the flowers definitely need to get their sunshine for the photosynthesis process. And just like us, we need sunshine too. That vitamin D is super important. So this is sort of like a crayon. It's, um, I know you have most likely seen these. These are twisting. Um, they twist out. And the texture is like crayon, but more, there's more pigment. So you can create some really nice um, gradients. And I also got these at the dollar store. Okay, and then some clouds. Yeah, some fires in the distance. So it is still a little bit wet. It's always good to let it dry before we do the rest of the process, but um, when you do it at home, that would be ideal to give it maybe another uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes to dry. And if you have, again, still any of these poking out, you can just cut them. It's not, they're not that hard to um, take off, especially with like just regular scissors like this that um, kids usually use that works too, so. And that is our project. So thank you for joining us and hopefully you enjoyed it and get to do this project with your, your family and especially the young kids who love to cut things out and love um, using their hands. They enjoy building and texture so this would be really awesome to help them and guide them in doing all the cutting so thank you so much thank you for coming uh, appreciate you and hope you have a wonderful day thank you daisy so much for teaching us how to create such a cool landscape piece
Um, again, folks, uh, we hope you enjoy this session with Daisy. Um, and don't forget to tune in to all of our next sessions um, with all of our different teaching artists. Um, take care. Bye-bye.